Hey everyone, Jack here from TrailTimeAdventures.com. Uh, I'd like to share an experience that we had this past week with our dogs after we got back from doing the Pinchin Skyloop Trail over in the Talladega National Forest in Alabama. As all outdoor people know ticks are a thing that we have to deal with on a uh, every time we go out and this year they seem to be a lot worse than they have been uh, in prior years I'm not sure why that is basically what happened to us was our one of our dogs Hagrid he's uh, almost 16 years old he's a, he's a Pomeranian mix and he loves to hike with us. We took him along and he did great. He did a great job on on the hike. And we noticed that we were really we were getting a lot of ticks on us throughout the trip, which is pretty normal. We'd been over to Pine Glen uh, a couple times to camped out at the the hunters camp there and this particular trip that we took, it was July 29th through the 31st, so just a couple of weeks ago, and it was a tough, it was a tough hike. We got in the car, we 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 started at Adams Gap, we ended at Adams Gap. We got in the car, we we drove home, and when we got home, the de-ticking began. Uh, of the dogs, it's always a it's always a process because they have really long hair. And so, throughout the week after work, Marcy um, picked probably a combined uh, a combined number of seventy ticks off of both dogs. I believe is what she told me. It's a lot of ticks. It's a lot of ticks. Fast forward to this past Saturday. Marcy got up for work, uh, got up in the morning, and she went to take Haggard for a walk. And she noticed that he was having a little, having a hard time. And, you know, he doesn't bounce back a, as fast as he used to. So, we, you know, she kind of shrugged it off, and she left for work. And then I got up a little later. And I work, I work night shifts, and I went to go take the dogs out before I left, before I was going to leave for work. And I noticed, I noticed that Hagrid was moving a little slow, and so I picked him up and I took him down the stairs. I put him down on the hardwood floor, and it was. It was kind of startling. He looked actually looked like he had been, you know, drinking whiskey or something. I mean, he was stumbling around, wasn't able to keep his balance, was falling down, and I immediately was was very concerned, very concerned. So, I immediately called up Marcy at work and I told her that she had to come home. We had to get him to the vet, uh, and so. I, I started looking up uh, emergency vets because it was a Saturday. Our regular vet it closes at noon on Saturday. So we I was looking for emergency veterinarian hospitals online, ones that had good reviews, of course. I found one. Marcy got home. We took him to the vet. She saw They saw Hagrid immediately. The, the vet came and told us that she thought it was idio idiopathic uh, vestibular disease. Basically, it's like the dog has dog has vertigo, and she said that it usually works its way out in a few days. So they gave him uh, an injection under the skin of fluids, uh, so he wouldn't dehydrate, and uh, something for nausea. They also mentioned that it could be tick that it could be tick paralysis, and they said that they had pulled off a few while they were in the office. And you know, you with tick paralysis, it 
it's caused by one tick. And there's something in tick saliva that it's a toxin and it goes into the bloodstream and it affect, affects a dog's nervous system. They don't really know how or why. It just does. And so, but they were leaning more towards uh, other options as well. So they treated him for vestibular disease and and they did some blood work said he was very very healthy had some high had high lactate levels which was due to uh strain you know, the strenuous hike so we get we we took him home we gave him his pill he really wasn't drinking too much he didn't have an appetite which is weird for him he loves to eat <laughs> and loves to drink water too and he wasn't really he wasn't really drinking and so but we weren't too worried about about that because they did give him the fluids under the skin at this point he was still able to stand he was still uh, but not for long he wasn't couldn't really keep his balance and he would fall over but he could lift himself up and he could stand however the next morning Sunday morning he was unable to stand at all and it was like picking up um, a, uh, a wet noodle. He was just un unable to stand on his own, unable to move on his own. He was completely alert. He was fine um, mentally, except you know you could tell that he was a little concerned <laughs> that he couldn't move. He was a little scared. We called the emergency veterinarian, and they said, "Well, you can bring him in, and we can keep him overnight until the neurologist gets here on Monday morning." And that just wasn't an option for us because he was already going through enough. The last thing he needed was to be in a strange place in a cage overnight, where he would, uh, you know, he needed to be home. Is basically the, what we felt. You know, he's also deaf, so we we decided that it would probably be a good idea to check him again for ticks. Marcy did and she found about a dozen more which we put into a Ziploc bag because we would be taking him to his regular vet the next day on Monday and about six hours later he was able to actually lift himself up again he started to make improvements which was made us very happy and Apparently, we had found that one tick. It's one tick that does this. And by the next day, Monday morning, he was back to his old pain in the ass self again. And loved the little guy, but he was a pain in the ass. <laughs> and he, yeah, you know, he was. He was just. He was. He was normal again. And so, Marcy took him to um, the regular vet, along with the Ziploc bag of ticks she explained everything to the vet and the vet said that it definitely was a tick bite paralysis or tick paralysis it goes by both uh, they could have they could say could have sent the ticks off to have them tested but it costs a lot of money and he was very confident in his and our diagnosis that it was tick paralysis so you know, I just really wanted to share this experience because as avid outdoor folk, which all of anyone who's watching this, I'm sure you are, it's something that you need to keep in the back of your mind. It is something that's misdiagnosed a lot. Tick paralysis is misdiagnosed. And if it's left, if it's misdiagnosed and left untreated, it can cause respiratory failure because it affects the entire nervous system their muscles shut down and they're unable they're unable to use their diaphragm i did some research on tick paralysis and i read that yes it, it is like i said it's misdiagnosed a lot and a lot of times the vets don't even they don't even really treat more than one or two cases a, a year of it if that it's pretty rare and so that leads to a misdiagnosis or no diagnosis at all 
and the dog not being able to walk is often it's often suggested that they're that they're uh, euthanized. It's usually a vet tech or a veter the veterinarian's assistant that finds a tick, pulls it off of the dog, and a few hours later the dog starts shows signs of improvement. Another thing is is that it can happen to humans too. It's very rare in humans, but it can happen. It's usually children, and from what I've read, it's usually young girls that it affects the most uh, out of human beings. Uh, they're not real sure why. Uh, it's just that's just the way it is. Also, um, <clears throat> I'd like to point out that Marcy kind of wrote an entire article, if you will, about our experience, laying out a timeline of everything that happened. It goes into a little bit more detail about our story. If Feel free to read that. I, I recommend you do. And also, I put a link in the, in the top of the article. Um, to, it says, our experience with tick paralysis. You just click on tick paralysis. It'll take you to a website where a veterinarian explains a little bit more about what it is and its treatment and kind of its prevention. <clears throat> so uh, I hope you found this informative and thanks for watching and please read the article and hopefully the next time you see my face I'll be sharing a, a lot more positive experience about the outdoors. Uh, maybe a hiking trip or a kayaking trip, something like that. Until then, happy trails, and bye for now.